Now, Scotland has long suffered from an epidemic of deaths due to drugs. It's considered the drug death capital of Europe. Well, new data released by National Records of Scotland shows a significant improvement. But the overall death rate remains tragic and still the worst in the UK and Europe. So let's take a look. In 2022, 1,051 people died due to drug misuse, according to the latest statistics. That's 279 fewer deaths than last year, so a big decrease and the lowest number of drugs misuse deaths since 2017 but look at this graph it's still a massive number compared to previous years more than 3.7 times higher in fact last year than in the year 2000. So how does Scotland compare with the rest of the UK? Well, the latest data for around the UK is from the previous year. Scotland, this bar here, by far the highest drug death rate in 2021. You can see Northern Ireland, Wales, England, much further behind. So let's look at this bar again. Let's bring in today's figure for 2022 for Scotland. It shows a sizable decrease, but still higher than anywhere else in the UK, uh, and now about 2.7 times higher than England. And while some of the international data is less up to date, statisticians do consider Scotland's drug deaths problem to be the worst in Europe. Our Scotland correspondent, Catherine Sampson, has this report. <laughs> The scale of Scotland's drug crisis can feel overwhelming. This performance at the Edinburgh Fringe offers a fresh perspective. I didn't want to make something that felt like it was hitting people over the head or trying to push a particular agenda. We just wanted to make something that hopefully encouraged people to just take some time out and think again about the topic. Maybe biases you didn't even realise that you held. We didn't give our children drugs, society did. Played out on a tabletop, Concerned Others focuses on the people who love and support those with addictions and cope with a culture of shame. You know, it's like, I actually think I deserve a medal. I don't deserve to, like, be made to feel more ashamed. Shoebox-sized scenes of domestic life connect drug use to other issues like poverty and childhood trauma. They leave space for voices that can sometimes go unheard, like Sandra's. And one of the police officers, she says, what a beautiful home. I says, what did you expect? The area that I live in. Sandra fought to save the lives of three relatives. All are now in recovery. She doesn't want to identify them in case there are consequences. What have you gone through as a family because of drugs? Hell, to hell and back. The stress, the worry, the anxiety of living with addiction in your family. Anybody in addiction, they're dicing with death every single day. Any family member that's in addiction, the rest of the family, that's their biggest fear that they're going to die. Drug deaths have dropped to their lowest level for five years, but Scotland's rate is still higher than that of the UK and that of the European Union. 1,051 lives were lost in 2022. The annual publication of these statistics has begun to feel like a grim national day. The first thing you see on the television is needles, drug paraphernalia in a dirty alleyway. It's just no good enough. What about the poor families that's lost a loved one in the last year? That's not what you're seeing, the family's grief, the heartache that addiction causes. This is everybody's problem. It's been failed drug policies for years and years, so everybody needs to take responsibility for this. <laughs> the situation can feel relentless, but there are also voices of hope. Like Titch Watson, who struggled with drug and alcohol addiction, his two young daughters have walked alongside him on his journey to recovery. I nearly lost my life once. I drank so much whilst taking diazepam that my heart rate slowed right down. I went unconscious and um, came to an A&E. &E. Um, I've had several seizures and one of them is potentially really dangerous because um, I was behind a wheel of a car. After losing relationships and his home, he decided to call a helpline. When I heard this person saying that you can recover, um, it, was, it was great and it was emotional. She cried and I cried and at that point we, you know, I then went, right, I need to try and find somewhere to help me and there was a window of opportunity there. And I was quite lucky, um, 
that I managed to find a rehab, but most people don't have access to that, um, and that's one of the big problems. I absolutely believe that there is hope for the future. For those who found themselves stuck in a system, the pace of progress can still feel slow. There's still a search for empathy. I think stigma is a huge factor. If enough people get the chance to think again about their views, then maybe views shift and then maybe people's lives start to change. Catherine Sampson reporting there. Well, joining me now is Elena Witham, Scottish Government Minister for Drugs and Alcohol Policy. Uh, Minister, we've been reporting on this issue for years on this programme. In 2018, the former First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, said on this programme she was sorry for the drugs deaths the year before. They were lower then than they are now. That puts things into some perspective, doesn't it? Absolutely, and I don't underestimate the challenge that still remains in front of us. And I think it's really important to take a moment to reflect on all of those lives that we've lost um, in the past year to a preventable um, drug-related death. And my thoughts are with the families right across the country. Um, and it's my job as Minister responsible to ensure that we continue to deliver on our national mission and the extra £250 million that the former First Minister announced um, that we were going to be putting into this until the end of this parliamentary term. So can you explain why the drugs deaths rate in Scotland is 2.7 times higher than in England? I think um, your graphs earlier were quite helpful to show um, that the northern parts of England as well see an increased prevalence of, of drug-related deaths. And I think the drugs death task force um, that we convened um, demonstrated to us that there's some um, real um, entrenched poverty and inequality um, felt within um, some of our communities in Scotland. And we also see a prevalence of um, poly drug use in Scotland um, that's higher than other places. So um, there's a real recognition that we have to, to work through those issues. We have to help lift people out of poverty and um, give people hope and give people opportunity, start to address some of the, the trauma and the childhood trauma that, that people have experienced in their lives that make them um, reach for substances in the first place. Back in 2016, the Scottish Government cut budgets for drug and alcohol partnerships by 22%. What effect do you think that had on subsequent drugs deaths figures? I think there's no doubt um, that disinvestment from services um, meant that we, we saw an increase um, in harm. And I think that the right decision was made to reinvest and increase that investment to the levels that, that we are seeing at the moment. Um, and it's it's up to me to, to work out how we actually sustain that in the long term, because we have created um, a network, you know, helped create a network of, of grassroots organisations across the country. You feature some of them in your report. You know, Families Campaigning for Change um, are, are one of those organisations, and I've met with them on several occasions. And we need to make sure that people can feel that these are our organisations that are going to continue to be there to support them at the heart of our communities. So you're accepting then that the Scottish Government's own cuts have contributed to this horrendous problem. Uh, I, I wonder if you can tell me how many of those crucial uh, rehab beds there are in place now for people who need them. You know, back in, in 2021, there was an audit that was done in all the, the beds across the country, and we knew that there was 425 um, so far, out of the £100 million that we have set aside to invest in expanding um, the residential rehabilitation means that we've got an extra 85 um, spaces um, on the go. And we also hope to increase that to 650 at yeah, just... the end of the Parliament. Um, and that yeah. actually translated last year into over 800 people accessing residential rehab. But the key question is how many of those 425 beds that were in the last survey were publicly funded? Not yeah, private I mean, we people have paying for their own rehab. 
Yeah, um, I absolutely get um, your question there. And um, we had over 800 people actually access publicly funded places um, last year. And we're seeking to make sure that, that we can get that up to 1,000 publicly funded places before the end of the parliament. And we're well on our way to doing that. And I think there has to be a choice in the different types of um, rehab that, that are out there so that we make sure that people can actually access rehab facilities that are going to work for them. And that needs to include abstinence-based um, facilities and also needs to include facilities that can support women and young babies and indeed families that need um, that support. So we've got Harper House that's opened in tall coach okay. run by Phoenix Pictures. And we've also got new ones in Dundee run by Aberlour that actually yeah. keep women and babies together. Minister? I have to leave it there, but thank you so much for your time this evening. Kathy, thanks back very to you. much.